Hi everyone, today I'm here with my January 2020 wrap up. For the first month of the year I've had quite a successful reading month I thought. I read nine books in total which hasn't happened in a long time so I'm really pleased about that. Three of them were really short non-fiction books but that doesn't matter and a few of them I started in 2019 but just finished in January 2020. But I'm still pleased about that and hopefully I can keep the pace for the rest of the year exactly at the same pace. That would be lovely. So yeah, let's go straight into the books that I have read in January. So the first book is one of those that I started in 2019, believed in October. That is Welcome to Rosie Hopkins' Sweet Shop of Dreams by Jenny Colgan. First of all, the cover is really, really pretty. I believe this one is considered to be a chiclet or women's fiction. So yeah, in this story we follow our main character, Rosie, who leads London and her boyfriend, she's still in a relationship with him, to go to a small village to take care of her aunt, who also happens to have a sweet shop that she's not run for a while, so it's just kind of sat there dead. And so now the main character thinks that maybe there is a way of revive the shop and make it work. In general, this is a good book. It's nothing special, but yeah, at some point I was contemplating DNFing the book, but then I had a break from it and the second half went better after I had a break from it. But yes, our main character, she is, how old is she? 28 or 31? I can't honestly remember how old she is. The way she was taking care of her aunt, because she's also kind of a nurse, I think she used a different term, but she's kind of like a nurse. And it was really sweet how she was taking care of her and the relationship that they formed slowly because her aunt is not an easy person to deal with. She's very old and she just can't get in terms of her being old. She might need to go to an old per people's home but she's really not happy with the thought of it. She can't, just she can't deal with it. She doesn't want to go. She's still, she's really stubborn, which is understandable. You do feel for her, but at the same time throughout the book, you learn more about her and you change your mind. She's not just a stern, cold hearted woman. So she's got her history. There are a few snippets here and there from her past which I found quite interesting and it does explain the way she is now as well which is kind of a little bit heartbreaking a little bit heartwarming at the same time but yeah I don't want to go into detail about that but the relationship that Rosie has with her boyfriend is not great her boyfriend is a Mummy's boy, let's basically say, he can't do anything without his mum and he is, and Rosie was kind of substituting his mum for him, essentially. And then, so they kind of start having difficulties in relationships and there are a few other men in the village that she might or might not be interested in and they might or not might not be interested in. I don't want to spoil anything. But yeah, it wasn't like anything special. I did give it three stars. I might even rated on Goodreads because I'm not Goodreads anymore but I might come back to be honest I don't know but yeah nothing special but it was enjoyable at the same time I don't think I'll be reading anything else but this author it's not really the genre that I read a lot from anyway but it was just nice book the next three books I think I'll mention <laughs> Uh, just in one go because they were really quick and short and I didn't read them one straight after the other But I just feel like it's a lot it makes a lot more sense to mention them now They're the tiny ones that I mentioned at the beginning tiny non-fiction books The first one is the little book of happiness by La Lucy Lane Then we've got little book of calm and little book of positivity I read them all in January. I rated them all four stars. There are different quotes on different topics of the books and they have pieces of advice how to feel happier or how to feel calmer how to feel more positive I did find them quite interesting and quite cute these notes are the um, things that I might come back to reread and maybe bring them to my life a little bit more but even reading them was a bit of a joy and whilst reading them I felt so much better because it did give me the thought that actually yourself 
is really important not just to acknowledge the way you feel it is really important and yeah because January was a little bit of a stressful month for me at work I needed those books and they were quite helpful in a way there are quite nice quotes throughout the book they really are easy to read literally I read one of them in one evening for within an hour so it was really really easy and I rated them all four stars so yeah if you want something like a quick pick-me-up nice quotes nice nice pieces of advice that don't really take a lot out of you I really recommend these ones like I said even reading those without taking any advice is a joy <laughs> Now the next book that I finished again I started in 2019 and that is The Crow Garden by Alison Littlewood. Uh, this one was a little bit of a weird book. Um, it is historical fiction, a little bit of a creepy historical fiction. Our main character in this book is Nathaniel Kerner. He gets a new position as a mad doctor at Crackethorn Manor. I hope I said that right. And we also follow his patient Victoria who, whose husband accuses her of hysteria but she accuses him of something far more terrible. So this book, I still have a few questions for it because it's I think it's one of those books that you don't know if the things that are happening are real or if they are one of the character's imagination, but then the things that happened, it makes you think that they did actually happen and it's not the character's imagination, but at the same time, you're never really sure. So it's a little bit confusing. What I liked about this book is that it is written in obviously modern times, but the, it is historical fiction, which is set in like 1800s, I think. I can't remember the time period, but I think it was that one. But the language was absolutely identical, I think, to how it would have been written if it was written in 1800s. So I definitely found that quite an interesting uh, trait of this book because I, I personally found it a little bit difficult at times to follow the story especially at the beginning because the language kind of baffled me at times I had to reread a few sentences because it felt like just reading a classic book but yes I did like the mysterious aspects of this book the first half was getting more tension the second half is more about the mysteri mysterious or a little bit supernatural aspect but like I said still I don't know if it actually happened if it is a supernatural book or if it's just literally purely on your on the character's imagination i don't know i feel like i've missed out on that and maybe if i read more reviews or research more about the book i will get the answer but i don't know but that is very a very intriguing book the atmosphere of this book is dark and sort of creepy and yeah I did like how you can't really trust the main character because like for the second half of the book you couldn't trust the main character because you could see that the way he thinks is that really right is it really happening so you don't know you don't trust him but you never know it might be really happening i'm not telling you <laughs> but yeah it was intriguing i did give it three stars i'm not sure why it just didn't it didn't blow my mind it didn't feel like anything special and it did struggle with the language a little bit i think m more people other people i think other people won't struggle with the language but i'm not a native english speaker so i kind of did find it a little bit difficult because it felt like reading a classic and i'm not good re with reading classics even in russian to be honest reading classics that was set in like 1800s i would struggle to read that so i'm just not good at that but it was interesting intriguing atmospheric dark and may potentially unreliable main character and a little bit mysterious and maybe supernatural so yeah, I don't know how else to describe this book without actually spoiling it. But if that sounds interesting to you, you might want to check it out. The next book, again, I started in December of 2019, and that was The Corset by Laura Purcell. This is the second book by this author. The first one was The Silent Companions that I really enjoyed, and at some point I'm planning to reread it. This one is a completely different story, probably with completely different characters, but just a second book by this author. And considering I enjoyed the first one so much, I just wanted to read the second one by her. And I've got a third one as well. 
But yes, uh, this one, we follow two storylines in this one. The first one is this young woman who whose charity brings her to a prison and she starts talking to these girls or women who are being accused of different crimes. And she takes a particular interest in one of specific girl, which is, her name is Ruth. And she's accused of murder of her mistress or the person who she was working for. And she confesses that she did it, but she didn't do it in any normal way that you would think. It was a little bit of a supernatural twist, let's say. I enjoyed Ruth's point of view a lot more. This book was very disturbing and dark at times. I, I found myself not in a good place from time to time whilst reading it. So that triggers you in that way as well. Maybe keep that in mind as well. Don't read it late at night when you're on your own. It just probably would make me feel really down and sad and depressed. That's how I felt at least. Um, but the plot was really interesting. It The writing style was beautiful. I was really surprised because some of the things that you wouldn't think could be explained in a beautiful way, some simplistic things, like getting a letter, she would describe it in a way that is so beautiful and you just enjoy the writing style, you just enjoy reading about the book, well, no matter what happens in it, to be honest. Not to say that there isn't any plot. Like I said, there are two perspectives. The, um, what's her name? Dorothy True Love. Her short, her story was interesting as well, and it was getting darker and darker towards the end as well, which I found quite interesting. So I did like how the plot slowly was going towards the end. But the thing is, we still don't really know, we don't get some of the answers that we still have throughout the book. Like in The Silent Companions as well, I found there was still some questions unanswered and the same thing happens in this book. But to be honest, out of these two, I enjoy The Silent Companions a little bit more. This one I just found a little bit too dark, a little bit too detailed because obviously the, um, considering, considering the time period that it's set in, I didn't mention that. I think, again, it's the 1800s. Um, some of the things like hygiene and other things were obviously not the best at the time. So some things are just described in very much detail. And the life of the girl, Ruth, is terrible. It was very kind of dramatic and she didn't really see a lot of good things in her life. But the book was really, really interesting. I gave it four stars. And I'm definitely interested in the third book by this author as well. So, but I just feel like I need a break from it because it was a little bit disturbing and a little bit too dark, but definitely worth reading. I might make a full, like a sort of review book talk about it if you're interested. So let me know in the comments if you are. The next book that I finished is another historical fiction and I did start it in January and finish it within a week, which is great for me. That is The Familiars by Stacey Hulls. This one is set in 1612 in Lancashire and this one is based on real events that ha really happened. It's based on the Pendle Witch Trials which happened in 1612 and it was apparently the most documented and the biggest trial of witches in history of England which I found really interesting and then after reading the book I also googled some things so that was quite cool. So in this book we follow this 17 year old girl who is married and who is desperate to have a child but all the three times, previous times she tried to get pregnant, she'd have a miscarriage and now she's desperate to have a child because her husband really wants an heir. And so she's pregnant for the fourth time and she comes across this young midwife, Alice Gray, who could help her to have a child. But then she, later on she's accused of being a witch and our main character could be in trouble because she's a friend with Alice Grey now. So, wow. <laughs> this book was really, really good. I really like the language of the book. From the very first page, which doesn't often happen, I was gripped. I was already involved from the very first page because it starts with the main character opening a letter about something. I'm not going to tell you. But... And then it just goes from there. And it was just like you completely thrown at the very first, from the very first page, you're thrown in this world or you're already involved and you already feel for the main character. So that was really nice. And every time I found myself um, approaching the end of the chapter, I think, oh no, I'm not quite ready for it. So I kept reading, to be honest. So 
Yes, the writing style, I think. It wasn't anything special about the writing style, but at the same time, I just couldn't stop reading and I really, really, really enjoyed this book. I think it might be one of my favourite books of the year, potentially. And the fact that it is based on the real events, even because the author researched the history behind all that, she read a few books, so she's got quite good knowledge of what happened. A few characters, most of the characters that are mentioned in this book, actually existed in real life. So there was this girl whose name I completely forgot to tell you about. The main character was named uh, Fleetwood Shuttleworth. She did exist at the time. She did live in the house that is mentioned in this book. And she did have a husband, Richard, who again is mentioned in the book as well, obviously, as they are main characters, kind of. And Alice Grey existed at the time. And all the other witches that were mentioned in the book existed. So I found that really cool. There are apparently some gaps in history about things, specific things, and the author just filled them up to make up a good story. I've really enjoyed it. I was quite impressed with how she managed to do that, to make it a, such an interesting story. And it was the first time I've read something that was said in 1612, quite a while ago, obviously. And I just found it really really interesting and really intriguing something refreshing because i don't think we see a lot of books that are set that while ago and based on real events about witches so now i'm quite interested to just read books about witches that are set in the past either in non-fiction or historical fiction i'm interested in both so if you have any good recommendations please leave them in the comments as well i'd love to check them out and now also she the author's got another book the foundling coming out in february i believe i'm definitely checking that one out because if the writing style was anything like in this one i'm gonna be reading it I, and actually this particular um edition which is beautiful on itself by the way it has a little extract at the end like the first chapter from the foundling and i read that one and i'm interested in the book i feel like that one is gonna probably be slightly darker than this one because of the topic it's dealing with but the book was really good i think again i'm gonna be doing a review or a book talk on this one because i've got so much to say it feels like that it won't just fit in this video but what i want to say is that i really liked alice gray as a character i think she was my favorite character we don't really see a lot of her background a lot of her motives but she seems to be a really kind woman a really strong-willed woman she's a little bit mysterious because we don't see a lot from her and she's obviously being accused of being a witch so you think is she actually a witch is she not a witch but she's really kind and strong-willed and just something about her that intrigued me throughout the whole book and also our main character Fleetwood Shuttleworth for a 17 year old girl, what she did for her friend was amazing, incredible. She was pregnant, she was scared to do the things that she had to do to save her friend, to do something about saving her friend. She So that made her really, really strong character, even though she was afraid. She, it was really uncomfortable for her to do it, but yes, she stepped out of her comfort zone to help her friend to do something. And that's what I found really great about our main character. Sometimes she, like her thought process, I think she's a really real character because the things that she was thinking, I would, if I was in that situation, I'd probably be thinking exactly the same thing. It's not always likable, but like I said, she felt, she felt really, really real. So that's what I liked about this book. And there are a few revelations throughout the book as well that don't have anything to do with the Pendle Witch Trials, just the story thing. But they were thrown out throughout the book as well and they were like little surprises, sometimes good surprises. No, actually, <laughs> I don't think they were very positive surprises at all, but they moved the story as well and it was like, I really enjoyed this book basically is what I'm trying to say and I think I'm going to be rereading it at some point especially now after having read a little article about Pendle Witch Trials having come coming back to this book at some point after having read that article I think would be really interesting so yes really highly recommend this book the next book was a reread for me and that one is the name of this book is Secret and that is the first book in a secret series 
I don't know how to describe this book without spoiling it myself, so I'm just going to read you what's written on the back of the book. Stop. Leave now. This is a secret story about a dangerous secret I must not reveal. Good. You're curious. You're brave. If you join this adventure, I will introduce you to some of the events and people in this perilous book. It is an alarming account of two extraordinary adventurers, a missing magician's diary, a symphony of smells and a deadly secret. But be careful, our enemies are watching and tell no one because the name of this book is Secret. It is a middle grade story and I was rereading it because I was considering if I want to carry on with the series. But after finishing it, I thought, mm, no, I'm not exactly interested in this one but um it was fun i gave it three stars on the reread by the way for the familiars that gave four stars not on goodreads but i might come back to it but anyway so it was interesting enough i think children will enjoy it because the first time i read it i enjoyed it a lot more because of the all the suspense that was going on and i really like the idea of symphony of smells which i'm not gonna tell you a lot about but just the sound of it doesn't it just sound good so some aspects of this book were really interesting and enjoyable, but at the same time, it wasn't anything special. And the way it ended, I'm not exactly interested in carrying on with the story and read four more books. But it was fun and enjoyable. I don't have anything else to say. And the last book that I finished in January was a gift from my friend from Russia. And that one is this one and apparently i saw it on instagram the other day it has a title book love by debbie tang this is a comic book i never really read comic books this was my first one but obviously it's not just a normal comic book it is about books or rather book love i love this book so much i properly gave it five stars and it's going to be one of those that i'm going to be rereading multiple times even a page a day or something because is just so relatable it's beautiful I even like illustrations this book definitely definitely does exist in um english so you can definitely check it out in english but the fact that it was also written in russian brought me more joy because it is my native language and so i had even i even connected on a higher level with this book because obviously it is about loving books libraries bookshops and how a person who loves books would act in life so it was really really cute and really adorable it brought me joy i read it in one evening and i loved it so much oh my god <laughs> so yeah these are all of the books that i have read but i also have my little book diary in which I write down every time I wrap up and so I mention other things so if you don't want to stick and watch the rest of the video that's it that's all the books that I have read thank you for watching but if you're interested what else I might have to say you're more than welcome to stay it shouldn't take me a long time but the first thing that goes is DNFs I didn't have any DNFs in January books that I really enjoyed I've written down the course set the familiars book love and obviously my three non-fiction books but especially the familiars and the book love there's also a section that is books i'm really interested in it could be the books that i don't have but want to buy or the books on my shelf that i'm particularly interested in so the first one of them is before the coffee gets cold by toshikazu kawaguchi i think i've seen it somewhere and then wanted it added on my wish list and then by accident i just saw it on my lo in my local books shop so i got it as you can see i'm reading it so this one is the one i'm interested in and another one i got the other day again by accident the telephone box library by rachel lucas i love the color of this i like the title and it just sounds really really cute this book is a story about which is set in this cafe in which people are allowed to go into the past there are a few rules it is for a very specific amount of time and it won't change your future but who would you meet for the last time and all that kind of thing so there are four different stories of four different people i've read the first one and it was good this one this one all i can say is that it is set in the village so it's going to be a tiny sort of calm cozy read i suppose and there's the main character who's taking care of her 90 something year old woman and there's also obviously something to do with the telephone box library and i think there's some secret in the past related to bletchley park 
from this um, 90 year old woman which I am interested in so there could be some historical fiction included in it as well books I bought or received this month like I said this one was the first one that I got it was from my friend she sent it to me from Russia and I loved it and then the other one already mentioned before the coffee gets cold and also another one that I just got again from the supermarket is the Tattooist of Auschwitz by Heather Morris as you can tell it is a historical fiction set in the period of World War II so I'm quite interested in that one <clears throat> my TBR at this point of me filming it for January at least I think it was 27 books then authors I'm interested in, not really at the moment, apart from Stacey Holes, the author of The Familiars and The Foundling. The next one is the books that I'm still in the process of reading. So currently reading the book that I started in January and carried on through February. That is How We Are Built Britain by David Dimbleby, a non-fiction about buildings in Britain, obviously. Then we've got Under My Hat, a short story collection about witches. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire and The Binding by Bridget Collins. Books out of the library. I didn't have any books out of the library this month or last month. Genres of books read chick lit or women's fiction one, non-fiction three, historical fiction three, middle grade fantasy-ish one and the comic book one. And then I also have a tiny section at the end which says thoughts January 2020. I enjoy reading books a lot more when I'm not forcing myself to read. Let's say I'm in the middle of two books and if I don't feel like reading one specific book, one that does something else, I think that's the best way for me to read it because when I put it down, don't touch it for a couple of months even, and read something else when I'm, which I'm in the mood for and then, I come, and then I want to come back to that book and finish it. So I needed that break in the book. That's when I seem to even enjoy the book a lot more than I was at the beginning, which happened to The Crow Garden and welcome to Rosie Hopkins' Sweet Shop of Dreams and even the corset. So I needed breaks between books if I feel like I need one. So just take a break without forcing myself to finish a book at the time. Not to completely DNF it if I feel like I'm still enjoying it but just want to, feel, to, want to read something else. So it's fine for me to just move on to something else, put the book down and come back to it whenever I'm ready for it. And also I did enjoy not reading any of the YA books in January as well. So that was nice so anyway that is the end of this video thank you very much if you stayed for that long it's probably been a very long video i hope you enjoyed it anyway if you've read any of the books that i've mentioned please let me know and what was your favorite book of the month of january mine would be the familiars or book love probably book love to be honest because it was just amazing and beautiful and relatable but yes, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye.